Enzo Fernandez, I, I need to throw this out there because it's been troubling me. And I hope man like Don's watching. Greasy, greasy, greasy Don, or Greasy Don, as I wanted to call him on Sunday, because he tried to weasel his way out of something, right? And I love Don to bits. He's a top lad, loves his club. And I think sometimes he loves them. You know, they say love is blind. This is a famous line from a huge hit in the 90s by the Spice Girls. But their line was, love is blind as far as the eye can see. And that is Don and a lot of Chelsea fans when it comes to Enzo Fernandez. Let me premise this by saying I think there's a huge amount of talent in this young man. And I agree that the system and the coaching isn't helping. But this guy at the weekend put in another absolutely dog breath performance. Didn't create, gave the ball away 23 times in a, in a, in a, in a deeper role. Didn't win a single ground duel, barely won a tackle, out of position at times. Absolutely horrendous. Do Chelsea fans have to start looking at some of their players in these conversations as well as the, the rightful criticism of their manager? Yeah, of course they do. They have to look at everything. This is their, their club is just an absolute mess. Like everything you have to look at the owners, the board, the manager, the players, they all deserve criticism. And, and you know, big up a cash, by the way, for the 20 memberships, man. What goal? Um, you know, you, you have to look at the, the, the... At the end of the day, it's top down, right? So you have to look at the board, you have to look at the owners, and, and they're, they're, in my opinion, to blame for this situation. But to, to at the same time, they're not on the football pitch playing football, and they're not making the, the tactical decisions. So, yes, blame them and, and criticise them 100%. This is all their fault. But then you do have to... You, you blame other people, and, you know, you have to blame Pochettino as well. But then you look at the players, and, and you're absolutely spot on with Enzo. Listen, for me, when I'm watching Enzo, I watch him. And by the way, I, I watched him at River Plate because City was um, linked with him and we were linked yeah. with Alvarez at the time. So I watched him at, at River Plate and I've seen him. I actually watched him for um, Argentina as well. And when I watch him in this Chelsea side, I don't know whether it's him or whether it's Pochettino, but I, I don't really fully get exactly what he's meant to be doing on the football pitch. Right, so when I I was come back to my team, right, because it's easier to do it for my team, and, and Dan could do it for, for his. But like when I look at my midfielders, I know what they're, they're there to do. I know what Rodri's job is. I know what even Kovacic's. I know what his job is. I know what Foden's job is. Kevin De Bruyne's. When I watch Enzo, like one one game, like when I watched against Sheffield United, he was dropping really really deep and just smacking the ball forward like a quarterback. Then sometimes I seen him a little bit more pushed up. Now, again, that might be due to Poch giving him different roles and stuff, but I'm not fully getting what he's meant to be doing. doesn't score, yeah? He doesn't get any assists. He's got five assists, yeah, in, in his Chelsea career. He's played 60 games. So he's got five, five assists in 60. He's got seven goals in 60 games. So he's not a goal scorer in this team. He's not, assist, he's not an assister in this team. He's not a Kante or a Rodri or, or, or a Makalele, a destroyer at the back. You know what I mean? So what is he? Is he just a is he just a pauser merchant? Is this guy just a Kovacic, someone who just keeps the ball and knocks it around? Like, what is he actually supposed to be doing now? Yes, again, you got to look at for me the manager and, and what is he ex what is he asking Enzo to do? But you know, Enzo for me has to be giving more. He has to be giving. He has to be giving giving more. But I just feel that like at the end of the day, this manager is just unable to get the best out of these players. And, and Enzo Fernandez, I'm 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 pretty confident that if you stuck Enzo in the City team, in the Arsenal team, or the Liverpool team, you would see just a 10x uplift in performance from this guy. Because I do think, like you said, Terry, I do think there's a player in there, mm. but I think this manager is just fundamentally unable to get anything out of him. And I think, first of all, just pick pick a position and tell him what to do rather than try to tell him to do everything else. So. Yeah, I don't know, man. Listen, he's got to be doing more, but then it comes back to the manager. It's just a mess, man. That club is just, it's just, it's just shambolic. It, it really, I, really I actually is. really want to see these players away from Poch because apparently it's all Poch. So as soon as we get another manager in, they're all going to be top four, fighting with City and Arsenal. Bollocks. Absolute bollocks. Let me tell you that. Poch can go if he wants to. Doesn't bother me. I think he's overrated and we've had that discussion before. These players are nowhere near the level of what some of the Chelsea fans believe they are. Now, it's not all the Chelsea fans, right? Because some of the fan base, you speak to people like Johnny Minerals, you speak to Goonies, you speak to Eunice, even Matisse. Some of them, fair play. But Don is one of them, and he's not the, the only one. There's a few others, right? And I love Don. 
But I've said to him so many times that he overrates some of his players. And this season, these performances from this guy and from Caicedo, by the way, who he thinks has been a seven to seven half out of ten this season. Yeah. They've both been absolutely shocking, in my opinion. Well, Enzo was in the World Cup team, though. Yeah, facts. So you, tell, you, can't, you can't tell me there's not a player. There's definitely got no, to no, be no, a no. player. No, 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 100%. Listen, he, there's a player in there for sure. Mm. But I don't feel like they perhaps was £115 worth of player. And now we're looking at that. What's this £115 player going to be like? Because I'm, I, you might laugh at this, but if he was to swap his performances with somebody like Scott McTominay, I wouldn't be sat in there going, wow, that looks much different from what I've seen at Chelsea. This guy looks just average, bang and, average. And this, and this is the thing. I, I understand there are elements that go wrong that are on coaching. I get that because I I use that same logic against my own players. But if you take an example, Scott McTominay is average in a good system or a bad system. He He would be, as Enzo would, he would be better in a well-constructed, well-drilled team, Scott McTominay, in terms of, I don't think he'd make as many mistakes, his positioning would be better. His quality on the board would remain the same. Maine, who's also suffering at Man United because of this ridiculously weird system that we have, the way we empty the midfield when we're pressing. But he's still in the game having lots of moments of brilliance because he is still a brilliant football player. That's the element for me where... I look at Enzo and go, where are those moments from you? Because I even when you start breaking down these numbers, there are some things that are, that are you know, that are, that are good. I mean, got good long ball passing accuracy of nearly 70%. He's passing accuracies in the high 90s. But he's a relatively low chance creator, but also gives the ball away a lot. But then when you look at someone like Declan Rice, you look at someone like Maynus, they create a lot less chances. Well, Maynu creates half the amount of chances that, that Enzo does because he's typically a lot deeper. But Declan Rice creates the same amount of chances but gives the ball away six to seven times less per game. But then both Mainu, both um, Declan Rice win far more aerial duels, far more ground duels, get taken on less um, and, and have had less errors leading to opportunities. So I look at Enzo and go, you're giving the ball away a lot. You're not that great defensively. You're not creating the chances. You're not scoring lots of goals. Where are those moments of brilliance from you? And the reason that I say that Chelsea fans have got to have these conversations is of what I've been through in the last 10 years when my club was struggling is that we, we've gone through processes where get rid of the manager and we'll be okay. We yeah. never were going to be. Oh, we could just get a good football in direction. We'll be okay. We're not going to be. Oh, if we get rid of these three or four players and buy three or four new ones, we're going to be okay. It was always about a combination of those things and actually having the right football decision makers looking at everything. And I think as football fans, we become really polarized or really hyper-focused on one, maybe two problems instead of looking at the wider issues. People do it to me now, what, Ten Hag? Well, Terry, you know, you want Ten Hag out. Why are you saying it's any different? But it, I don't want Ten Hag out in isolation. I want every fucker out, including the vast majority of this squad because they're not good enough. And I use Enzo as an example where I think Chelsea fans, listen, you might get a better manager. You might buy some more experience. You might cook. You might go on to have a brilliant career at Chelsea. But I don't think in, in when they put their hand on their heart, when they're alone at night, laying in bed, all quiet and dark, I think Chelsea fans have got big red flags going off in their head about this man. £105 million. Pound, when, when, give me one £105 million pound performance against a decent or a top-level team. I, I can't, of the top, Chelsea fans might remember, so tell us them, because I'd love to know what they were. You've seen a young man in Maynard. You've seen what Declan Rice has done. By the way, Declan Rice is putting in top-class performances in mid-table West Ham teams. So let's not act like you have if you're that great a player, you must be able to do it still at the right in, in moments at least, at least. That that's my point is against Sheffield United, when Sheffield United are having more shots against you and your team is worth a billion pounds, it isn't just the manager. You need to look at the players and go, right, this manager we don't believe is doing is the best for us right now. What are we gonna do about it as a team? Because if you're telling me that they can't get more shots against Sheffield United and beat Sheffield United, a team that we put 11 goals past in two games, that Newcastle put eight goals past in one game. If you're telling me that that is all on potch, the players can't sit there and go, look, we're better than them on the pitch. Talent, we're talented boys. Mm -hmm. Let's just do what we can to get the job done. Are they talented boys? Because I'm not seeing a £200 million midfield at Chelsea. I'm not seeing a centre-forward. I'm not seeing a winger that's £90 million. I'm not seeing a centre-half pair, centre pairing. That Disarcy was ridiculous amount of money. He looks a disaster. 
You've got Badia Shile, I was told, was like the Saliba level or the Wesley Fofana to come through next. That guy's been a shambles. They've got a left back and right back. They've only got that Gusto and Palmer that you can actually sit there and go, you two look ballers. The rest and of that, them, and that's just the like thing. They're, they're putting in good performances in a bad team. Facts. That's not Poch, though, is it? So does Poch no. get the credit for that? Palmer and Gusto, it must be Poch. That they're, they're, these are the reason them two are doing good. Yeah. No, it's I, not. The players just ain't that good. <laughs> wait, so let's look at look at look how good City are. But Nunes ain't. There you go. Jack Grealish ain't. They're not good. Well. You did that on purpose, bro. <laughs> this guy's a wind-up merchant, man. <laughs> I am. Yeah, I told you, mate. I told you we won the league on Sunday, bro. I'm shameless today. I'm, I'm having I'm having a bubble. Um, uh, Enzo only good guy, only good with arguing with ex-teammates. And he's on so an eight-year contract as well, isn't he? Someone just reminded me in the chat. He's on an eight-year deal. How much is he on a week? Is he on door? He must be. Let's have a little look. Please don't tell me it's more than like 200, 250, man, because that is shocking if it's if he's on more than that. I don't know if it's that high. Salary, no, uh, 180,000. Right. It's still not great, but I suppose it's, at least it's not like ridiculous, ridiculous numbers. It's still Can ridiculous. Imagine, though, if, this was, if this was Arsenal or Man United or, or anyone, City, Liverpool, any others, why is it with Chelsea? Everyone's just. Nah, it's just well, let's not talk about Chelsea anymore. We're bored of our but rubbish. You, I, 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 you know why I think about it, Dan? how bad they've been. No, I love no, no. it. You let's know why it is? Let's keep I, talking I think, about Dan, it. I think it's because people are now just accepting that Chelsea are in a table club. They're finished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I genuinely do because, like, it, you know, last year everyone always like was was speaking about Chelsea. It's like, oh my god, can you believe how bad Chelsea are this year? But like, now it's the second year. So are, are people not just turning around now? Say, is this actually maybe just what Chelsea are now? Yeah. Are you right? Well, are the players are. just rubbish and they're just a mid -ta mid table club? Like maybe this is just what Chelsea are now. Like until they actually start making better decisions, like this is just what's going to happen. But but the here's the thing: you, you mentioned a minute ago, Potsy, about all the players that they've signed. They fundamentally overpaid for all the players. Like Caicedo was so overrated and so overhyped at the time. One one five for him was an absolute disgrace. It's a disgrace. Yeah. Like why why, why pay that? What, because you think he's going to turn out to be some, you know, next level CDM in, in, in the coming year? Football doesn't work like this. We spoke about this before. If this is how football worked, Sir Alex Ferguson, yeah, um, Pep, all these great managers, they would never have signed a player over 25. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson would never have signed Robin Van Persie if that was the case. Because he would have gone, no, let's not do that. Let's, guy, let's, let's sign some guy from 18-year-old from France. You know, you've got to buy proper... Good footballers. And, and the fact is, we're still sitting here, yeah, 18 months into this project of Chelsea's, and they've still not got a proper striker. Mm. And they are lucky that they've stumbled on this Petrovic, who seems to be half-decent, but that's a complete and utter fluke as well. Look, when Man United signed the Yapstam in 99, when we signed the White York in 99 and I'm not I want to make sure I get the White York's uh age right I, I know for a fact that Yap Stam was 26 year years of age the White York it was 27 so it's 26 turning 27 and that's the whole thing in the year that we had our greatest season ever we were signing 26 and 27 year olds as as our main as our main players and that does need to be looked at and any football a funny thing this time last year, the world was going crazy over Enzo. They were going crazy over Lavia. They were going crazy over Caicedo. And whether it's based on injury, which availability is the, is the best ability, poor inconsistent performances, or just being completely meek, because I think Caicedo's had a very, very average season as well. Agreed. The amount of mistakes he's made that have led to goals as well is, is crazy. You add it all together. I said in the summer, you know, the amount of money they were all costing, there's part of me that was jealous. And then people said, oh, would you like to come in for Lavia now? I said, no, we've got young Mainu coming through. Slightly different position, but I just trust that more. I'm just looking at him. I, I don't want to spend 80 million there. It made more sense to stick with him. And it's mad how you look at things a year later sometimes and go, wow, um, I, I'm glad we weren't involved in those races. But they've gone and signed all three of them. And mm. there's... I'm not saying a new manager can't get improvements out of these players, but I listened to something that Omar Barada said whilst he was working at City. This is a City standard. I've seen a lot of United people say this was the same at Old Trafford, and I'm sure most big clubs and great clubs 
will tell you that they had this mantra that players get 18 months to two years, managers 18 months to two years. People get up to about two years to prove they're good enough. And if they're not, they have to go. The problem you have, if that is the, the, sort of the general amount of time that a club allows a player to shine, they might become a fringe player after that. But if they get two years to become that star in the first team, and that's how most top level clubs operate, what do you do to some of these players on eight-year deals if after two if after two years they're not improving? What if you get rid of Poch and they're still not better? What then that's do what you I'm, do? That's, that's what I'm that's the, that, you can't let it go on three or four years because then you've got four years remaining and no one's gonna buy him. You actually have to sell him sooner rather than later when there's still a bit of hype about them. So look, Chelsea have got a lot of soul searching to do uh, this summer. There's no doubt. And look, my club do as well. I'm just saying that my club's doing something different now. I, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how it's going to go. I'm not even happy with all the things they're doing, but I've got to almost wait for the football decisions to be made before I actually judge them because we have no idea. But I just, it's the way Chelsea, you know the expression, I want to say this was Shakespeare, but I could get this wrong. Like one does protest too much, methinks. The way I see them jump into the Fendenzo, like, like wild dogs, tells me, oh, they know. They're a little fearful there, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me let me let us know in the comments section, people, what you think. Uh, we had some super chats come in here. Says, uh, you do know you didn't win T Dog on Sunday. Yes, we did win. We did win. We did win. It was a 2 2 draw. And um, we at Man United have put a serious dent in f f uh, Klopp's leaving party, and I'm happy about that. So I am. Uh, Enzo reminds me of the Nielsen who played for Arsenal. Oh, do you remember with the Nielsen? Yeah, mate. Terrible if that's the case. If he's like him. This is, <laughs> but this is the vibes I'm getting. The way yeah. Arsenal fans used to defend that man and, and rave about him reminds me about what they're doing with Enzo. You know, sometimes yeah, yeah, let it go. You're, you're, you're doing too much. Yeah. It's too, I mean, in fairness, Don did it the other day with Carl Palmer. He reckons that people just go to Chelsea to queue up just to watch Carl Palmer play. I'm not there to watch Chelsea anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This is all the, you know, this is, this is all I've got. Oh, dude, it's crazy. Man. He backtracked a little bit on Sunday by like, no, he's it's, just, he's just, he's the most entertaining reason to go. I'm like, I can buy that, but I don't believe any Chelsea fan wakes up on a Saturday morning and says, right, I'm off to the bridge. Why, well, where are you going? Who are you playing today? I don't care. I'm going to watch Palmer. I don't think any Chelsea fan has said that. I don't. I don't.